Welcome back to Kevin Pollock's chat show. I am, as always, chat show. How the hell are you? No, seriously. Uh, you don't write. You don't call. But do write. Uh, fan mail. KPCS. Oh, God, I used to know this. KPCS fan mail at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to read a couple today, if you could imagine such a thing. Um, but there, yeah, that's it. It's uh, KPCS fan mail at gmail.com. Uh, I'm trying to get better at this. So um, I'm going to make an effort today to read a couple. Um, we're coming to you from the Earwolf Studios in Hollywood, California. Um, stop by any time. I can't suggest this enough. Just drop in, uh, say they're expecting me. Uh, even use my name, whatever it takes. Come on in. Uh, say hello to the, to the gang, the wonderful Earwolf Studios gang. <laughs> They'd love to meet you in particular. Uh, recent guests, you ask? All right. I don't know why you had to get pushy all of a sudden. Billy Bob Thornton and uh, Marilyn Rice Cub, who is so delightful. J.K. Simmons and, yes, Ricky Gervais. Um, these, are, uh, these are some good episodes. But, you know, there's... This, today, I think, is 353, so you've got a few to choose from uh, as we just celebrated nine years. For those of you who give a good goddamn, the table reading rehearsal for episode two, season two of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel uh, went super great. Shooting began this week, so yay, more to come on that. Uh, super excited to be back to work on that ridiculously fun show. I find two different types of people come up to talk about the show. They're either obsessed with it, or I haven't seen the show, but my friends are yelling at me to see the show. I, I don't know the last time I was involved in something where people reported they were being yelled at to watch it. It's kind of a, a new and groovy thing. Dear Kevin, writes one of you, here is what I love about your show. Uh, by the way, for the rest of you, always a great way to start an email. Uh, here's what I love about your show. If you want it read, just go ahead and lead with that. Sometimes I look at the guest's name for the week and I say to myself, who is this person? Uh, I listen and always am so glad that I did because I learned something new each time. Such was the case when you had Dan Van Kirk as a guest last month. I've been trying to figure out for years who Mark Wahlberg is impersonation is on Doug Loves Movies, and now I know. Thank you and your staff for all you do. I travel a lot for work, and your podcast is a joy to listen to and helps pass the time. That's why we're here. Martha Abiticola might be a way to pronounce it. Uh, we're here to help you pass the time. That's uh, It's actually on the one sheet on the poster of the chat show. We're here to help you pass the time. Uh, writes this next person, Chris Foley. Hello, Kevin. I'm a huge fan of yours and love your chat show. I have two questions. How did you get through bombing on stage when you were starting as a comic? Interesting. We uh, will. Uh, my guest today uh, participated in um, a little documentary I, I directed on the on many subjects. One of the chapters was bombs away. Um, he goes on to write. Also, do you write your own jokes out word for word, or do you have a framework outline you use? Excellent question. I'm going to put these to our guests as well. I'm I'm always curious about the actual process. Uh, I just listened to interviews with Larry David and Ricky Gervais, which were really helpful to me as a performer. Mm. I am 44, and well, now you're just bragging, and began performing stand-up in New York in the mid-90s, but stopped 2002 out of fear of bombing. Wow. Mid-90s to 2002. So you went a half dozen years and said, I can't bomb anymore. When I bombed, I would wake up the next morning and yell to myself, you suck or you idiot. Hmm. However, for some reason, when I turned 40, I seemed to care less what other people think. <laughs> there you go, Chris. I performed a one-man show in New York and took acting classes, but now I am getting back into stand-up at open mics. It can be a bit humbling considering many of the club managers and MCs are younger than me. But I guess that's just the way things are. Hope all is well on the West Coast. Keep up the great work you're doing on your chat show, Chris Foley. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, these are great questions, and they're perfect for my guests and a perfect transition to uh, to my guests. Yeah, let's just get to to the fun of this damn thing. Um, we um, So she's in this documentary that I directed called Misery Loves Comedy. More importantly, she's had an illustrious career, uh, and people like – that wrote this note down – that was um, – I, I don't know if this is embarrassing when these sort of – 
proclamations are made. But um, it was uh, 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 Colbert and Apatow both said she is the funniest person on the planet. She's the funniest comedian I know. Please welcome Maria Bamford. Maria. Well, so what do you? Kevin. Did he? Did Colbert say that to your face? Because the- he said that to to my face. It was delightful. I have to say, um, which. Uh, yeah. And then, then a British comic pointed out that the next time I was on, he said, "One of the funniest yes. comedians." <laughs> Already downgraded. <laughs> which, which is it totally makes sense because I, uh, I am. Uh, I mean, that's what happens: is you think somebody's the best, and then you see them in person, you go, mm, uh. "Not so much," <laughs> except for a few uh, amazing. Uh, people. Anyways, it's a, yeah, I think it's extremely subjective, but I'm grateful that they said that at any time. Even if they would never say it or think it again. Yes. They thought to say it, and um, that makes it real in that moment. Yes. Right? Yes. Because there was no pressure. That was not part of the pre-interview. Yeah. What would you like uh, (laughs) Mr. Colbert to say? Well, I'd like him to say that I am the funniest person he's ever seen. (laughs) That would be great. Is that possible? (laughs) Who would say that in the pre-interview? So that's adorably what I'm introduced as. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's my intro. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Stephen Colbert said those very words. So yeah, that's very, very kind and very uh, supportive and um, yeah, uh, lovely. Uh, I, if I were uh, more ambitious, mm-hmm. perhaps I would have um, used that to trampoline myself into. Uh, uh, a place of fame and fortune sure. uh, far beyond of what I've achieved. Uh, but I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's all that stuff's a lot of work. <laughs> Turns out people who are extremely famous uh, are there for a reason. Uh, they are hustling. Yeah. Uh, they are doing a great job. It's nonstop, never ending. And then there's the luck factor. It's a luck factor, but I think. But it's uh, a lot of work. It's. It's serious. I was just on, um, and you know what? Have you ever been defined by something, the facts that surround you, and you go, oh, this isn't an anomaly. This is what is who I am. I was on a a celebrity uh, edition of Worst Cooks, which is uh, who's who of who. Sure, sure. And um, uh, I ended up, uh, well— it's it's still on the air, so I probably shouldn't uh, say what happens. But, anyways, it was <laughs> spoiler alert. Very yeah. um, humbling, humbling. Uh, in that, you know, I was the least known person on on the show, uh, and uh, they the other people were just incredible uh, performers as well as hard workers. It was sixteen hours a day in a kitchen. It was not. Uh, this. It was and it was non-union. <laughs> so they had a, they had things wow. like the six-hour turnaround where they're like, and at one point they said, "Oh, we're going to do some Frankensteining. You need to stay an extra hour." And I said, I said to a PA, I said, "Hey, I love you so much. Uh-huh. You young, beautiful person. That's right. Um, we're both powerless right now. That's right. Uh, I." I've been fired. Can I just tell you? I've been sure. fired so many times before. Uh, some so many times that I probably don't even know how many times I've been fired. And uh, so the only retribution I've received after being fired is an a, enormous rush of relief. So I'm going to head out. And uh, <laughs> so I I headed out. And they did some kabuki theater of like, oh, Miss Pamford, please don't know yeah. no. But uh, I I appreciated the performance and and then of course it didn't matter at all because. Who cares? Uh, yeah. but <laughs> well, not only who cares, but but uh, one of the first lessons I ever received in show business a hundred years ago, they had just invented fire, uh, was production will fuck you at every turn. So at some point, you need to learn to just push back a little yeah. and say, "Yeah, I'm not doing that." Yeah, I, I got. But it. no one likes to be that person. Well, right? and it and it like it it is. Um uh, I understand that they're trying to get something done within a certain budget, and uh, sure. and and no one else did that. Uh, I mean, Latoya Jackson and uh, Catherine Bach, who have been in the industry for many many years, they were all fine with it, and I was the wimp. I was just like, uh, yeah, 
uh, which I, I think says more to my uh, lack of professionalism. <laughs> I don't know about that. Else. See, to me, as I climb uh, through the wreckage of show business <laughs> and experience therein, uh, I find that it is the more professional oh, yeah. who chooses their battles. Yeah, yeah. And doesn't just, you know, uh, it's so it's kind of the weird uh, give and take of getting a job, yes. right? Because that our our actual job is getting a job. It's amazing to get a job. Yeah, it's amazing. Right, so delightful. And usually it takes a day or two before someone's sitting in the makeup chair after getting that job, complaining how they were brought in too early the day before. <laughs> so. And yeah, I sat around for like six hours before they got to me. Yeah. Um, that's great. Uh, but you do at some point have to look out for yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I wor- I mean, I worked in, in food service, uh, waitressing, and, and um, office work for many years. And so I, I, I have been fired many times in different circumstances. I've been fired from comedy clubs. Uh, so I've, I've gone, th- I've pierced the veil of shame and uh, uh, moved past it into the, the joy of, oh, I get a day off now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said there's an overwhelming <laughs> sense of relief oh, each and every time. Each, each and every time. <laughs> That's, well, I think maybe you've, you've, uh, you've found Valhalla, Val- <laughs> which is freedom, wonderful. Freedom. I mean, of course you feel, I, I, I feel bad or embarrassed or, um, I remember I got, uh, you know, I think I was on a TV show when they said, oh, you're just not a good fit. And, and I'm not the greatest actor, so uh, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, yeah. Um, that you were ever a fit. Yeah, I was ever a fit. I I, 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 I wasn't sure. Uh, it, this is on you. You made the decision yeah, in the first right. place. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, which you're allowed to back out of, so yeah. <laughs> you can stop apologizing. I'll just get my stuff out of the dressing room. Uh, can I take... Some of the craft service. Home. Yeah, that would uh, be nice. <laughs> it, you know, it it is all subjective. Yeah, right? yeah, and uh, yeah, I've been on the opposite side of when I've fired. I mean, I've sure. had people work for me who I uh, just had a, somebody who was assisting me for a while who I it didn't work out with, and it wasn't so much about you know that they were a bad person or it was just like oh this isn't a a great f- fit and. Um, yeah, but um, and how were you in that situation? Because the first time I, I ever I? had to, few, first of few, <laughs> there haven't been many at all. I don't want to suggest, but um, it was the single most awkward thing. I uh, well, I paid them their full salary uh, for I believe three weeks, and uh, then uh, yeah, and so, so it was, gave them a severance package. Sure, uh, and so not uh, quite a golden parachute, but but but. It, which is slightly, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. From I, I, I gave them s- some time. Um, I did, yeah, yeah. Beyond what you had to had to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I gave them notice, and then I said, hey, "I'll pay you for the next three weeks." And um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, I felt okay. I felt pretty good about that. But it is, yeah, it's weird to be uh, the boss or to say, "Oh, I, I did have an opportunity to be." The producer on a TV show, yeah. and um, when there was, and I, I wasn't a part of firing, except that there was a person who started, you know, screaming at the extras, and I oh, was like, no, 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 you know, like those people. That's the hardest. That is the like uh, that is such a, a hard, thankless job. Uh, nobody's yelling at 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 uh, the. They're such a maligned group. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, also, let's start with how about don't yell at anyone? Yeah, nobody gets yelled at. Yeah, no, please. It's yeah, a no. non-yelling uh, yeah. set. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the yeah. signage. Yes. Yes. Three colors. Yeah, yeah, there's no no, no need. And um, and I've been on the other side of, of being yelled at. And uh, it's not fun and it doesn't help you work any better. It just makes you feel like, oh, God, oh God your legs start shaking involuntarily or mine uh, do. Sure. And um, – uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, um, uh, when you do get the opportunity to be on the other side, yes. um, 
you know, there is a certain level of freedom that also comes with that. It's a different kind of freedom from being fired. It's a freedom of people to looking at you to make decisions based on your creativity, which is allegedly what you've been working all these years for. And then it be can become careful what you wish because now everyone's looking at you for guidance and uh, they don't tell you when you're 11, you know what, kid, life is too short. You know, they usually <laughs> wait till you're in your late 30s, early 40s before you start to hear life is too short. Um, it'd be nice to start on, on pre-teens, yeah. really to just <laughs> yeah. get it in their heads. Life is too short. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so fatalistic. I'm 12. Uh, but I, I've always um, – I, I like – Creative freedom, right? Yes. And uh, with with others, to I don't mind sometimes with a leadership position if I have earned it. Yes. Right. Yes. But then, yeah, certain responsibilities come with it that just don't fit me. They don't uh, jibe with why I'm doing this. There are certain aspects of all this that that like every time there's a big strike, writer strike, yeah. actor strike. Um. Not just I have Russian blood, not just that I'm 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 pro union most of the time, but um, I didn't uh, I didn't pursue comedy and then acting to get into labor disputes. Yeah, yeah, and I and I yeah I, I get the, and I I think our, our our union is one of the only ones that exist anymore and has a significant amount of power just because. Uh, the people at the top uh, are willing to strike, you know, so yeah. who are uh, making most of the money. So that's that's the great thing about the union. But um, and but there is like on my own TV show, uh, it was very difficult to get myself a twelve-hour turnaround, uh, even though I was the one, you know, because I. I uh, I need to sleep. Sure. Uh, I love I love to sleep. Uh, I'm also on antipsychotics, which uh, will uh, enable me to sleep. And uh, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, but I had to fight uh, my own production to say, yeah, I, I I will not be awake for the entire day if if I don't uh, get that don't turnaround. Get, don't get the turnaround. And uh, and yeah, there was definitely some. Uh, peer pressure, and not a result of anybody being a bad person. Right. Just like everybody wanted getting getting in under a budget, I assume. Um, uh, but it's but it's other people's needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, and right. which which uh, yeah and under I, the guise of serving your production. Yeah, and you think uh, I, I guess it's that fantasy of like oh once you get to a certain place. Certain you'll be taken care of, like yes. somehow, and it's like no, 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 no. You still gotta, you have to speak up for yourself, and um, at every uh, level, which I think that was uh, has been very surprising to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know that's, why, but that is maybe the subject at hand uh, to focus on momentarily, which is you have to speak up for yourself. Yeah. You have to know where your strengths and limitations are, and feel. <laughs> It's okay to share those. And what you want for a career, like I, my manager, Bruce Smith, Omnipop, um, who is a delightful uh, person. I mean, I am, uh, my career is not my first thing. I d definitely, uh, he knows that. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, well, the one thing I know is that you'll never uh, leave my agency because uh, the only way you'd leave is someone gave you less work. <laughs> Which is completely true. As like, I just um, uh, I can't believe how far I've gotten and how much I've uh, work I already get. And um, it's enough already. It's enough. It's enough. I'm I'm uh, I'm good. I mean, uh, yeah. For today, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I, I I know there are some people who have the energy and the extroversion. I mean, you've got to really. Want it uh, oh, to be, uh, you know, touring all the time, and uh, and also uh, m generating that much new material. I create a new album once every three years, right. um, and you know, just listening to your uh, the uh, your listeners' letters in. Like there's this pressure of like you've got to be killing it all the time. 
or never again. Yeah. Like, well, what if I'm just okay at this job? I'm okay at it. How about if I set my own pace <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so that I still enjoy it? Yeah. People ask me about uh, when are you going on tour? I never really did extensive tours because I never wanted it to feel like a job. Yeah. Right? And I go out three, uh, probably four times a, a month. And uh, I did this bizarre thing where I acted out a, a comedy premise. You know, like you hear comedians have these great premises of like, you know what we should do? We should send a marching band from a high school into Afghanistan because that'll just be distracting and inexpensive. <laughs> and, uh, you know, perhaps bring peace. And, you know, who lo- doesn't love a high school marketing band? That was from Isaac Witte, I believe. That was his premise. And I thought, oh, well, you know, what if I filed a restraining order against Trump? I thought, oh, that seems like such a funny idea also i've i've been in an abusive relationship so i know that the system works yes. like it is super fast you get in within an hour you see a judge uh and it's uh and i genuinely feel afraid of uh donald trump so i thought oh i'll go through with it and uh <laughs> then of course i've got all this uh horrendous uh Feedback, but the whole thing from from I got on Breitbart, which was a terrible mistake. But one of the things was uh, from trolls was saying, you know, you're an unknown. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's yes, yes. <laughs> you're just doing this for attention, of course. <laughs> like, Thank you, Captain Obvious. That's why I'm in show business. I yeah. love attention. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Just the thing like t- that. There's nothing wrong with uh just being in the middle and uh i don't have to be the greatest and and i don't have to be the worst i can still work on my craft and well you've got stephen colbert insisting you being the worst isn't possible for (laughs) for one episode of his show the next one (laughs) if you were on nine times you might work yourself down to my next guest is the worst (laughs) comedian i've ever seen we're frankly we're just (laughs) filling time here but um but no the the listen uh find your place in the sun find find a way to do this job so that you can somehow enjoy it um i i'm sure you have worked as i have with giant famous people and yes. they're looking over their shoulder at the next giantly famous person coming up from behind them they're never there's no actual plateau to reach there's no there's no end yeah, yeah. That's as right. soon as you're done with the show and somebody's taking a picture you know oh you know whatever i'm sure uh amy schumer's she's coming out of the show uh oh thank you can i have a fifth can i have a fifth selfie with you miss schumer like it is never enough. Yeah. Like people just – and because that's the human – I mean that's my human instinct too. Like I go, God, I love that TV show. When when the third season – Crazy Ex-Girlfriend's good. Why don't they have the third season out yet? Uh-huh. Like just – that's what I'm like. It's I, human nature. Yeah. I yeah. can't wait till <clears> – <throat> I just had breakfast. When's lunch? Like yeah. I just – When's the next <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, probably tomorrow morning. Uh, but yeah, we we, we are uh, unsatiable. So so w- when you are the one giving, uh, as opposed to looking for, uh, looking to be sated, uh, you you have to hold on to something, right? You have to have um, some boundaries. Again, it's all part of how how can I make this experience enjoyable for me and then if I'm having fun yeah if I'm enjoying this if I'm keeping it at a pace that is a doable yeah yeah and be enjoyable then I think everyone who enjoys what I'm doing is gonna be happier because I'm you're happy they yeah. just want you to have fun up there yeah. honestly yeah no no totally yeah they're having a good time and even if they aren't well uh, the benefit of me having a good time is pretty, at least for me, yeah. is uh, pretty good. Uh, it should and, be the only reason you're doing it. Yeah, and and if there is uh, a drop off in interest, uh, as there may very well be, uh, at the very least, I'm still having a good time, yes. and I think uh, I'm I'm still a fan of what I'm doing. And it, the guy who was, or I don't know if it was a female or uh, male who was talking about the fear of bombing, how do you deal with bombing? And I also think, well, 
do you have to keep going up at the place where you're bombing all the time? Like, uh, yeah, bombing all the time. It's, if you're bombing all the time, yeah. or if it's a rough room, unless that's your comfort jo- zone and you love to get into it with people, yeah, make your own space. Right, like, back create, away from the comedy connection yeah, in Boston. Yeah, it's okay. Like to not. Uh, I don't do well. Uh, there's a club near my house I don't do well at. And uh, I was like, oh, why don't you go more up at uh, this club? And it's like, well, it's not a super fun experience for me. I do well in weird black box theaters with yeah. a bunch of artsy people. And I do a show. Um, I run my material now at 4 p.m. at this black box theater in Hollywood. Fantastic. And I just uh, do an hour there. And, yes, it's preaching to the choir. And it probably doesn't help my writing a whole lot, uh, that I could probably be sharper if I was going up more often at, you know, different types of rooms and I don't stuff. know. I think that's a great thing you're doing because they're going to give you two to three minutes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Of anything goes. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, they might be harsher critics in terms of that involuntary laughter we're all looking for. It's the great thing about laughter. They don't have a choice. If you're delivering, yeah. that laugh is coming from what you did. And. And I think sometimes you go to, um, well, especially clubs, comedy clubs where people have gotten in free, mm. but yet they are forced to drink two drinks. It's a Friday or Saturday night, so people are already having an expectation and maybe angry. <laughs> I mean, seriously, and I've been that person. I have been the person who's having a shitty time at a show. I just want to talk with my friends because I don't enjoy the show. I love to talk so much during shows that I do this for a living. So I can talk during the whole fucking show. I, you know, That's the most original reason I've ever heard as to why someone got into stand-up. Because I'd like to be doing all the talking. <laughs> for real. Like, I get why that's fun and also a relief to heckle. Like, if you're having a bad time or you didn't know who the comedian was or you're not enjoying uh, what they're talking about and you're trapped and, and you're semi-lit, like sometimes comedy clubs, the audience is semi-lit. Like, it's it's all these psychological things yeah. going together. It's like and, – and I, I th- never want to see the audience when I'm on stage. I, I'm I'm okay with seeing a few with them, but right. I think I also want people have the freedom to ma- let their face do whatever it wants to do. Sure, and uh, that's why I like them yeah. in the dark to give them the freedom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and also, yeah, I don't always need to see uh, somebody falling asleep or. Um, why are your arms crossed, sir? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm you know. comfortable this way. Yeah. Sorry, I asked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Sometimes I. I Obviously, you're going to see the first several rows, but uh, you'll, I'll go into a scenario where the entire audience is lit. Yeah. And um, I think, is this a matinee? What, what's happening? <laughs> Why is? Are we in a cafeteria? What, 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 are all, what are all the lights for? Well, and I also I feel like it isn't fair to the audience to light them in that if they need to leave, like there you go. That should be the last. Or, or the first American freedom is to walk out of a comedy club. But maybe perhaps one of the last ones we have is like to – The Third Amendment. The, the Third Amendment, you at any point uh, during the show can get up. Any show. Um, and 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 or uh, not, nonviolently protest. Uh, That's right. Do a sit-in. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I can appreciate that. But uh, like I, I went to go see a show and I – and this was recently – and I was in the back, and I it was an improv show where the person was up there, and the premise of the show was that they kept getting suggestions and then not taking them, and then asking for the same suggestion again, not taking them, and asking for again. For maybe some people were enjoying it. I started involuntarily stamping my feet, and it's like Maria, get out, yeah. like. It's time you, you got to go, and um, <laughs> this isn't for you. <laughs> it's not for me, right. and and that's okay. And that's part of the beauty of the arts. Is yes, that it's that you can walk out <laughs> deeply uncomfortable. Do you walk out of movies when you go see films if you're not enjoying it? Um, because that's a I, real safe place. I none of the people on screen can see you leave. Yeah, exactly. And I um I haven't before. I sh- I totally would. Uh, I remember seeing Hellboy, and for whatever reason. I know it's supposed to be funny, and but th- for whatever that combination of funny and violent it isn't for me, you know. And uh, yeah, uh, I, 
I think I just closed my eyes and plugged my ears and then I remembered how much I loved my friends who I was with. As opposed to leaving. <laughs> oh, you're with people. Leave. I was with people. You're with friends. You don't want to disturb their good time. Yeah. I want to circle back, if you don't mind, to the restraining order. So this was to keep <laughs> this was to keep uh, uh, the commander in chief at least a thousand feet, five hundred feet away. I well, I thought did, did about saying number? two thousand miles, sure. but they only had space. Yards. Oh. It is blank space and, and yards. And you hadn't done the math yet on how many yards it would be to keep him 5,000 miles away. 5,000 miles away. Because that would have maybe taken him out of the country. That would have been great. <laughs> but then I thought, well, maybe it wouldn't be taken seriously at all. Uh, no, and it wouldn't of, have. Of, so. How many yards did you go with? I said 1,000. Sure. And I I wanted to be at least respectful of the process and, and to acknowledge, and I do want to say, um, I did get some critique from uh, some, I presume, uh, ultra conservatives on the uh, on the twits, uh, which um, came down to idiot. I yes, I did go to a state school and had a C average. Sure, uh, your cunt, very big one. Uh, <laughs> you're uh, uh, just doing this for attention, of course. Uh, you're crazy. That's that's my well whole documented. shtick. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> bipolar too but that's just so far we're agreeing all all the way down all the way down yeah uh why can't we talk about this stuff um <laughs> so um yeah i thought at least it would be satisfying as uh because i feel like they're i feel powerless i feel right. like that's what i wanted to get to was it indeed satisfying on that level it was in terms of— Because you had of, an idea. I had an idea. And then— And I thought—I think I, f- I feel like as a comedian, like, <sighs> there's a there's a comic I remember who— um, I'm forgetting his name right now. Had a beautiful joke about, like, comedy's never changed anything. Like, uh, they used to have comedians uh, back in the slave days, and the master said, uh, yeah, you're funny, Rastus. Not get your freedom funny, but— so yeah, it's a great. Joke. It's like useless, and um, right. so I, I wanted to do something that I thought at least might be uh, meaningful, and if it went any farther, uh, because it, it, he has threatened. Uh, us with nuclear, uh, you know, or at least with nuclear worth another country, creating nuclear uh, annihilation. He's dismantling the Environmental Protection Agency. He's uh, also uh, putting people in danger who are of, uh, in terms of his racism, mm-hmm. like uh, saying publicly. Uh, He's also breaking up families. Breaking up families. I mean, it's just. If you have people living in, you know, uncles, parents, what have you, aunts, Whatever relatives might be, they're living in red states. Yeah. A, a divide has been created that's uh, deeper and wider than I remember in my lifetime. Yeah. Uh, suddenly your your family is not uh, politically different. They're completely different. Yeah, you can't even talk about it. And, you know, I know I have some relatives who are much more conservative than I am, and, and they're very uncomfortable with his – from what I know, with, you know, his character, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but uh, seem to be down with, uh, oh, finally, it's not. Yeah, I I mean, I think it's, for me, it sounds like um, fear and racism, you know, so, but, uh, you know, again, uh, this is me calling names on something that I I have a lot of as well. I'm, I'm sure... Uh, I was born into privilege, upper middle class. My father was a doctor. My mom was a therapist uh, in northern Minnesota where, uh, yeah, I was treated like a, uh, a Fabergé egg. So I don't know what I'm talking about is is to say that. But um, Well, we all have our own life experiences. Yeah. It doesn't mean that we can't have opinions about right and wrong yeah. based yeah. only on our life. Yeah. <laughs> right? But, but I decided I didn't uh, – it, it, we – I could have another court appearance, um, they said. Uh, it was denied and then they said you can have another court appearance coming up and I just – I don't think I'm going to go through with it just because it was like – it just became something where it was just as gross as everything else is. Like TMZ picked it up and I was Ugh. just like, oh. They ruined it. Like I was just like, oh, this isn't – it just feels ba- bad. 
I just felt like this is just making things worse, you know? Right. It's, well, and especially for me. <laughs> but but also it's not helping at all. It's giving it's giving a fuel to the dark side. Yeah, it's not. In a weird way. Yeah, so. Um, well, I thought it was hilarious. Well, thanks. And I wonderful. <laughs> in terms of, like you said, a premise. And then let's follow through on the premise. Yeah. And uh, experience that. Yeah, I had a... Um, an old premise that I thought was just a great idea. Instead of putting people in prison, let's do nonviolent torture. Like putting people in like I'm listening. jobs. Like uh, uh, at the time it was Osama bin Laden. Of course he's dead now. But um, given a position as a roller rink DJ only during birthdays, mm-hmm. um, you know, that, that – that he has to maintain, you know, this very American Western thing, like things like that, where I go, we can have something pretty funny, sure, uh, that torturous, uh, that would be torturous, yeah, but um, make it be, be a waiter in a comedy club that only has tables that are having bachelorette parties. Oh my god, inexpensive, sure, too, and a lot and less expensive to acknowledge how difficult those jobs are. That also would also acknowledge symbolically how how. Uh, Difficult those jobs are. Anyways, I just think comedians have a lot of great foreign policy and domestic. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> We've proven that today. <laughs> I want to uh, make a left turn and ask you what you're watching. You know, we, we, we've both been involved in creating television programs and being in television programs. And now that there are almost 500 <laughs> scripted shows on all <laughs> platforms combined. Ooh. Oh I'm, I've become a little more curious about people who I admire and respect creatively, what they're watching. So this has become a new uh, question. I think I just watched, and I may get the title wrong, Inframan? Intraman? It's a it's Keep talking. A, I don't know, I don't know this one. It's a Japanese uh, movie, but Roger Ebert said was a, fa- a favorite guilty pleasure. And it's uh, all uh, Japanese superheroes. Or no, Chinese. Not Japanese. Chinese. So, so sorry. So sorry. Chinese. <laughs> I said Japanese because I was thinking of Godzilla, but they have uh, there's like tons of monsters and uh, and the great thing is it is human beings inside monster costumes oh, yes. with a wonderful paper mache uh, claws oh, and, my goodness. and a, a plant monster that anyways. Where did you find this program? My husband uh, picked it up. He loves to uh, get things uh, online. You know, he'll just well, now you're just up. bragging. Well, what? Okay. There's this thing called a debit card, uh-huh. and we set it up with this Amazon. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so we watched that, and what else? Oh, we've been watching, we're older, Last Tango in Halifax, which is- Keep uh, talking, again. Okay, okay. Uh, it's a British show, and it has some very uh, good actors in it, and it's just about older people who fell in love, and then their families, and how- uh, but it's people in their 70s and 80s who have a romance. Is it scripted or? Scripted. Wow. Scripted. And Where did you find that program? That's on the Netflix. Sure. And then there's, um, we're, yeah, we're mostly a Netflix family. Watch a lot of any tr- uh, crime. So we've watched uh, Scott and Bailey, uh, all the British ones. Uh, so the British ones do it pretty damn well. Oh, so good. Um, Broadchurch. And then um, Mine Hunter. Mine Hunter. We watched that one. That so is good. so good. So right. disturbing. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Please more. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be more coming down the pike on oh, that. Oh, for one. sure, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, super creepy, and the acting is spectacular. Um, that's that's I think my my favorite. I don't watch a lot of comedies. We watch Stuart Lee, uh, who's a British comic, mm-hmm. who's just. If you uh, get a chance, he is on. Um, he has his last special, I believe, on, uh, which is over about six episodes on Netflix. Stuart Lee. Stuart Ugh. Lee. Lee, so good, so good. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, there is a uh, a show on Amazon that I keep telling people about called Patriot. Oh. At the center of it is espionage, but it is dark comedy. Personified within under the guise of of drama, okay, uh, like early Cohen Brothers and Soderbergh got together and did some fucked up shit. I mean, oh. it is, and the acting is brilliant and the writing is phenomenal. And um, so far, everyone I've turned on to it has been uh, ecstatic. 
Patriot. Patriot. Okay. Patriot. Weird, wonderful. Weird and wonderful. Yeah. I also um, I watched Crazy Ex Girlfriend, which sure. I watched three s- seasons, and that's I'm really excited where the show went because it's, it's, it's turns out it's a about. Um, uh, the personality disorder, mm-hmm. the uh, borderline personality disorder she comes out with in the third season. And I've just never heard of that uh, um, a, addressed yeah. in a in a, a lead character. In a lead character. So that is super interesting. And then um, – but then what do you watch when you're in a hotel room by yourself? Yeah, well, it's slowly stopped being what's on the television. Oh. I find myself now – uh, now that you can download from Amazon and Netflix. Okay. And some of the other places are starting to catch on too for downloading onto my iPad. Right. Uh, so that I have several things to watch in the comfort of the a hotel room and, and on my iPad of my own choosing as opposed to depending on the programming that the hotel decides they can afford. Right. Their TV. That's interesting. Yes, I – Because there's so much now and there's so many ways – to find back seasons of a show you've already watched that they want to make them available either through Hulu or some other place, right? Right. I should do that because I I always just go – I remember childhood and I'm like, it's a cable TV. Sure. And then I turn it on and I just watch Say Yes to the Dress uh, Uh for – it's a real comfort to me. I right. like before a show, I like to curl my hair. Uh, everyone says, don't curl it. Don't curl it, Maria. And yet I must. Uh, I get a curling iron uh, in the Midwest, and mm-hmm. you, you can't stop yourself. And um, and then I watch uh, women pick out, did, did she get one or didn't she? Did it? <laughs> is it an A-line or is it not? We're talking about real drama. Oh, right? It's so delightful. Life decisions. I bought my dress used uh, uh, online from a public bathroom. This woman, uh, I met her in a bathroom in Pasadena, and I tried it on. I said, hmm, this will do. Um, I'm going to need a little more information <laughs> how you, this woman, and a dress got into a public bathroom. You're, uh, it's called uh, preownedweddingdresses.com. It's classy. Sure, and but you, why is it they're working out of a Well, bathroom? that's where we met. Ah, we oh, met the, in like public. a changing we room. We met in public. And, well, it wasn't a changing room. It was just a public bathroom. And I said, uh, yeah, I'll just try it on in here. Uh, thanks for coming. So you could and order online, and then you have to meet up meet physically up with the person. Yeah. to try the damn thing on. Try the damn thing on. And it turned out it was perf, and um, uh, and it was only 300 bucks. Wow. Wedding dress? Oh, yes. Instead of 10000 Oh, Jesus Christ. You cares? found a beaut. Found a beaut. A, a real winner. Yeah, perfection <laughs> for 300 clams. 300 clams. I'm sure it could have uh, done even better than that, but, and then, uh, but I... I no, my better half, who it. who you briefly met yes, as yes. we uh, had breakfast near each other yes. up at Sketchfest uh, earlier this year. Yes. She, her nickname is Depression Baby oh. uh, because <laughs> she will squeeze a dollar until Washington weeps. It's extraordinary, yes. and she's she's not of an age that that would be a normal thing. Well, yeah, it's. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think uh, I like. I write down. I. I I text all the money that I spend every day. I just I like to know what's coming in, what's coming out, even if it doesn't matter. Yeah, we may all fall into the ocean, and it doesn't matter. Oh, but uh, it but, does, but and I it's also, calming. Yeah, I find it calming to know the the ebb and flow. Yeah, and I uh, whenever you you do get to a little point where there's a little window of I'm we're going to be okay for this amount of time. Yeah, yeah. based on what I've just uh, agreed to do. Yes, yes, right? yes. Oh, yes. The level of um, uh, momentary comfort. You know, people think you're 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 successful in showbiz and therefore you're set for life. Um, and no, no, the Tonight Show you net <laughs> three hundred bucks off that gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or or whatever it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, large scale, small, what have you. Uh, we we've all become, uh, I think, uh, curators of uh, happiness. And so sometimes it's easy happiness. Sometimes it takes a little more work happiness. Um, and also it's kind of fleeting. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, yes. My um, – the past three years I did the TV show and I had a special. Uh, Netflix was paying very well. And so – Old this, baby. Old baby. 
my, this year my income dropped precipitously. Sure. And so um, I had to my my dear friend Jackie Cation, who's a hilarious comedian, mm-hmm. uh, JackieCation dot com, Dork Forest Radio. That's right. Um, and it's Jackie and Lauren's show. She's so fantastic, and she opens for me. And before, for the past three years, I've been doing a profit sharing thing where she would get a third of the net that we took in from every show. And I can't aff- I can't afford it anymore. I'm not even sure if I can afford to hire her as just an op- opener. Right. Um, so. Um, Anyways, I'm I'm hoping I'm going to meet with some friends just go over my numbers and go, oh, okay, yes, because it's almost like I can't not afford to have her on because otherwise the job is kind of very lonely sure. and uh, not fun. Well, let uh, someone show you how many dates you need to do in order to – Afford, and that's that's the thing. It's like you don't want to rob Peter. Like, oh, okay, I'm I'm doing more dates to pay for this to do this, and it's like, no. Uh, like, here's the comfort level of number of dates. Yeah, you can yeah. Do. Here's the number of dates you need to do, and, and then you find the middle or you don't. Yeah. Uh, but that ebb and flow is, uh, I think, what's helpful is to get to a place where you realize this is just part of it. Yeah. There's going yeah. to be good years, and there's going to be tough years. Yes, for sure, for sure. And. Um, you, if there's any way to wrap your head around that, or just accept it as this is just the way it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, and it's not. I'm always willing to. I try to keep my typing skills up. Uh, you know, I'm. <laughs> I mean, who knows? But I'm. I'm. I'm always willing to have any kind of job. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm not. Uh, uh, how are the typing skills? They're pretty good. I'm not. I mean. Do you know how many words a minute? Fifty words. Fifty words per minute. Not the greatest, but if uh, a struggling time? nonprofit needed a receptionist, <laughs> uh, I think I might get be able to so get that specific. job. <laughs> a struggling nonprofit. Um, <laughs> all right. So, so I would love to know your writing uh, process because uh, uh, Foley, Chris Foley, I believe his name was in that fan l- mail. Um, was asking about um, do you write uh, your act out word for word or do you go on stage with a premise? Do you Are you playful? What is your uh, process and ritual and, and – uh, I just do it over and over and over again in any way that I am willing to do it. Mm-hmm. Do, you, <laughs> do you ever write it out word I, for word? I, yes, I write it out word for word but I also – you know, don't or I right. uh, record word. all the sets. I, I and I listen to them or I. I but I got to tell you, like my my lack of willingness is very high. Like I do not want to, almost never want to do it. <laughs> and so I've got to like, uh, I'll get other comics. Like okay, let's do jokes back and forth. Or because um, I think when I was younger, I I I think I had the fantasy that somehow. Uh, once I reached a goal that there would be this uh, joyous thing. And it's like now that I know that that's not necessarily true. And, yeah. But you, you've got to keep going because that's what life is, is, is you keep blooming. Sure. And um, so to, to get myself to do it, it's just like working out. Like it's like, okay, I know I'm going to feel great. After I do this, and this is going to make my life better. Uh, but I still creating. don't want to do it right now. Oh, I now. do not want to do it at all. <laughs> And um, I, I have a blog, actually, where I uh, kind of bookend. I'll say, okay, I'm going to write uh, – I'm going to do this. I'm going to go through my set. Uh, I'm probably going to do it today because I go up to Fresno uh, after we're talk- we talk. Fres, yes. And um, <laughs> uh, and then I'll practice it, and then I'll check in with my blog that I did it uh, to have some sort of – um, cause, yeah, I am Schedule. scheduled and also t- accountability. Uh, That's a great word. Yeah. Accountability to yourself and, is phenomenal. And to have witnesses. I love an audience. Yes. I love an audience. Yeah. And might as well use that. Right. You know, like. Um, it's why I say I'm on uh, Twitter yeah. as opposed to Facebook. Yeah. I don't give a shit what my friends and family are doing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what's on the wall. I really don't. That's what email's for or a text. You got a picture, send it to me. Yeah. I'm on Twitter because I love an audience yeah, yeah, of total yeah. strangers. Yeah, it's it is fun. Yeah. It's endlessly entertaining and um 
Yeah, so I, but I, I, any way I can do it, I'll, um, uh, on the way to Fresno, I'll probably uh, rehearse in the car out loud to myself, or if, if my husband can stand it, he's heard the jokes so many times. Sure. Um, I know that feeling. It is, they're, they're comforting that they're hearing it. Uh, they're they're being gracious. Yes. To hear it a seventeenth time. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and every time I start to tell a story to someone while Jamie's standing there, there's a part of me that feels the need to, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> to her, honey, I'm sorry. This is number three hundred and twenty-two. Yeah, but there's a person <laughs> here who hasn't heard this yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so you have the various forms. Do that, yeah, and I tweet out my shows that I'm going to do the show at 4 p.m. I do it at 4 p.m. in Hollywood. Uh, I tweet it out, and there at least be two to 25 people who show up, uh, you know, a lot of self-employed people in L.A. Um, I gotcha. and, and 4 p.m. is the most depressing time of day for me, so I was like, do it then. Because uh, it's huh. like, that's when I just... I want to give up and not leave the house for the rest of the night. Things are starting to break down <laughs> at 4 p.m. That's why coffee places do very well at 4 oh, p.m. I love, I love the invention of cold brew. I oh, don't know when that was invented. There's but... a cold brew on tap here oh, at Earwolf. Of course there is. Yeah, and they're not messing around. And you got a house dog. Yeah, no, that's a sweet house dog. <laughs> yeah. They're all set up here. It's like a Google. <laughs> um, uh, not not quite as big of kitchen but <laughs> as Google. Uh, New York Times did a piece about you a few years back called The Weird, Scary, Ingenious Brain of Maria Bamford. Now, did you read it? Did you keep a copy? Uh, yeah, I've got it framed. Yeah, yeah I would too. Yeah, frame that. Holy schmoly. Right, frame that shit. Yeah, that's uh, kind of spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was really uh, very... Uh, Honored. I love the New York Times. I uh, um, and I got to write a little uh, piece for them. Um, they they have this thing series and pays fifteen hundred bucks. Hello, uh, hello. Get the cash cows coming in mm. uh, to the barn. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and it, it's uh, what is the theme? Like it's, an opt ed. What it's an it's a thing where you say my first time. And then you get to choose what your first time is. You pitch a few ideas to them, and so um, and then I, uh, my my thing was the first time I realized I could uh, be married. Uh, was when <laughs> it's a weird timing thing, but I was I was in the psych ward, and and, um, uh, and people there who were completely uh, you know out of their gourds or not doing well had spouses. Sure. And I was like, what? What? Like. Hey, yeah. what am I waiting for? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, I was also uh, catatonic at the time, but still in the retrospect, thoughts were there. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, stop waiting around for when you know whatever you the uh, magic that you have or the magic. Just uh, if somebody wants to be with you and you want to be with them, make it work. Like, you can do it. You know, so. Um, I, I, that was, yeah, that was, uh, that's what I What a great thing about. to write about. Yeah, it was, uh, well, and, and people could probably still find that piece if they go to the New York Oh, God. Times. Oh, yes, com. for sure, of course. It's there. Yes. It's the paper of record. It certainly is. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so here's the other question. What other mediums might you enjoy writing for and, uh, is writing and directing a film sometime Ever crossing? Nope. Nope. Just uh, nope. kind of write that off as no. sorry. Too much work. Not no. not for me. It's extroversion. It's all day. It's like a lot of t t talking to people all day and uh, right. big picture thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, all things. I, I like to be uh, either a brain dead megaphone, like a benevolent figurehead at the top who knows nothing. Sure. Um, or and gets uh, paid. <laughs> and gets paid. Or uh, a follower. Oh. I love to f you know tell me where to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, should I should I lay down in that corner for a few hours till yeah. you need me? Fantastic. Speaking of which, did you happen to watch the Wild Wild Country? I have not, but I've heard that's incredible. Docu-series. Well, I asked because it, it, it's a lot of followers oh. <laughs> in it <laughs> like, who were ultimately, um, you know, uh, well, in some cases you could make the argument that they were all duped, but the fact of the matter is uh, – for a period of time, their lives were changed, in many cases, for the better. Oh, okay. 
Okay. While while financially being duped, uh, oh. but the the documentary certainly suggests that these people, some of many of them, yeah, many many thousands, um, found a a side of themselves uh, that was better and greater and and more enlightened, and and that's all kind of great. No, right? no, I mean like the Tony Robbins thing. I go, well, if some people are enjoying it. I'm physically afraid of them, but uh, yeah, like like or or I think it's weird. To, I just I have a problem when somebody has to pay a giant chunk of change in order f- to have kindness and friendship, you know, and yes. support. Like yeah, or or enlightenment or enlightenment. Quite frankly, like, I mean, look, therapy is amazing and it costs money, it costs and you're, yeah, you should yeah. find enlightenment. Yeah, yeah. Um, a seminar. Yeah. Uh, that costs. Uh, crazy amounts of money. Well, and the psychology is you don't love yourself or you, you're too afraid to succeed if you can't get this money together. Well, that – I don't know. I just – that's what – I do love 12-step programs, although I know they are a cult. Um, to, and I – the thing – the thing, the real things that bother me about twelve step programs, they say, "Oh, you can't, you can't say that you belong to them about the a- anonymity thing." I just go because the argument is that, "Oh, well, uh, what if somebody finds out, Maria, you're in uh, nicotine anonymous, and they're like, oh, I, I won't go there because uh, she's horrible, and I would never go to a thing that she would go to. Uh, I don't want to go." And then, uh, or else, uh, Maria, there- Maria Bamford's in Clutter is anonymous. I saw her carrying around a thousand pounds of. of <laughs> Newspapers. It doesn't work. To which I want to say to all 12-step programs, nobody wants to go. Nobody thinks that it works. <laughs> so just uh, – but I do. I want to go. Right. So uh, let me keep going and talking about it. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I belong to like five of them. Oh, right. delightful. Delightful and free. Sure. Uh, well, beneficial. Yeah. However they're beneficial for whoever they're beneficial yeah. is the important part. Yeah. And I'm an atheist, I just want to say. Uh, but that's the other thing about 12-step groups. They can't kick you out even if you don't believe in a bunch of it. Right. The higher my power. My favorite. Yeah. Right. Which my higher power uh, is cognitive science. Uh, so Is uh, a higher power. Which is a higher power that I don't uh, – but uh, yeah, I, I just uh, – I, I don't believe in God. Uh, and, and the prayers, I just think – uh, well, uh, I guess it's it, it, it if I, I think the whole thing of people holding hands. I, I mean, I think there is some sort of brain chemistry thing that goes on there. Um, so I'm down. Also, yes, uh, whatever works yeah. for the individuals yeah. attending is what matters. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, however you want to do it, however you want to be a part of it. Let's be uh, uh, less controlling as to how people participate, maybe. Yeah. The important thing is that they are participating, yeah. that you want to participate, that you want to feel better, get better, uh, benefit from whatever the programs are. Yeah, and try to be uh, hopefully a, a better person. I was – Yeah. I was try- I am I am kind of com- competitive ethically, Um I realized. <laughs> it's like, you Ethically know, compatible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Com- competitive. Yeah, competitive, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what it is, but I just – I want to be better than just one person and someone in my weight class. Like not a sure. oh, serial killer. Okay, well, I, you know. You can't compete. That's not fair. Yeah. That's an unfair <laughs> advantage. Yeah. yeah I wonder, uh, do serial killers uh, – do they worry about carbs? Have they also moved on to almond milk? <laughs> Uh, I mean, oh, I've been t- – yeah, I'm supposed to not have carbs, but it's hard. It's so hard. <laughs> so hard. Uh, it's time for Kevin's Pop Quiz. Oh, my God. I, I love quizzes. Yeah. Between 5 and 15 points possible for each of these three questions. Okay, great. Okay. And once the final score is tabulated, it will be posted on our website along with the current standing of the top 100. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Question one. Dave Keckner or Rob Riggle? Dave Keckner. Correct. Question number two. Carl Weathers or the weather in Carlsbad? Oh, that's a, uh, I'm, I'm going to say Carl Weathers. Correct. Oh. And question three. Keith? No. That's right. <laughs> three for three. It's a perfect score. <laughs> Just a complete denial as an answer. 
The answer again, no. <laughs> oh, Maria Bamford. <laughs> what a delight. So now you have a tour. There are dates on your website. Oh, yes. Always touring. People uh, tour can never please stops. go to your website. Yes. Um, and check out the tour dates where you might be performing near them. All over the country. Next year, Australia, uh, perhaps the UK again. Uh, I was just in London at the Leicester Square. And how was that? Uh, it was wonderful. Yeah? Delightful. Was it part of a festival or you just went and did no, some dates? No, just went and did some dates. And it's, uh, yeah, a comedy in uh, the UK is uh, very nice. Very and, nice. And this is something Bruce Smith... Bruce Smith, uh-huh, who everyone. I've known forever, also oh, a lovely you? fellow. Oh, he uh, is a delight. Um, I love, I love, I love you, Bruce. Give him my best, please. I will. Yeah. Um, all right. Find those dates, people, and uh, and write to us kpcsfanmail at gmail dot com. Tell us how you uh, how you uh, enjoy the show or don't. Uh, <laughs> I love to hear from all of you. Believe it or not. And um, I want to thank uh, Sam, our engineer, for uh, uh, all the greatness and uh, fortitude, talent, nice. gifts that you bring to the proceedings. Mm. Oh, my pleasure, Kevin. And, uh, well, I think you could probably remain seated. <laughs> uh, thank you to Corey Levin for the post-production work on the show. Thanks to everyone here at Airwolf. Uh, Sammy and Jamie will be with us again soon. I assure you. Uh, thanks also to Sam Levine for uh, filling in the uh, last couple of weeks. Did some shows for us. Check those out um, at KevinPollock.tv. All the uh, all the chats or episodes there, as well as all your audio listenings here at the Earwolf. That is our show for today. Until next time, and as always, get out of my face.